Hi, I'm Pastor Kurt from Seven Seas Ministries and welcome to our latest video. We're going to call this one Two Bottles and a Box. I know that sounds like a strange title, but you'll see why in a little bit. I want to start off by uh, reading from Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 10. So if you want to grab your Bibles or just follow along or whatever, that's fine. 37.1 starts off, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you, and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together. Lost my place. <laughs> and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. And before we get started with what the main topic is that I'd like to talk about, I want to make sure that we understand that a couple of times the word breath was used, and it, it actually means breath of life. So that's going to be the foundation for for where we start from today, and we'll see where we go. So what about this thing called uh, two bottles in a box? Why, why is the video called that? Well, I've been pondering on this for a few weeks now, and I've been intending to, to record this video for a while, and just didn't feel like I had everything together that I needed, or that I had the, the fullness of what God wanted me to share. But today, as, as the day has gone on, I feel like I've gotten more of, of what I need in order to put this out there and, and hopefully it will come across the right way. So two bottles and a box represent three things. And these three things are things that are on a on an individual level and in a in a bigger picture on a corporate level they are working to try to destroy the body of Christ one person at a time so it affects the body as a whole the body of Christ as a whole but these things are working against people as individuals so the two bottles and the box represent these three things. The first thing, the first bottle represents alcohol. The second bottle represents prescription drugs. And the box represents cigarettes. And so it's these three things that God has shown me are, are they're wreaking havoc with the body of Christ. And, and a lot of what's happening is they're destroying people's bodies, but they're also destroying lives, not only the lives of the people uh, who are being affected directly by this, but the lives of all those around as well. And so we need to talk today about 
the two bottles and the box about these three things that are so so heavily affecting the body of Christ. You know, a lot of people may look at at drug addictions, alcohol addiction, and and addiction to nicotine as things that affect just the world. But in reality, there's a very large percentage of the body of Christ that is in bondage to one of or more of these three things. And so, you know, prescription drugs are, are one of them. And prescription drug, drugs come in, you know, many shapes and sizes as far as what they're for. And what I, what I felt like God has shown me is that the vast majority of the prescription drugs that people are addicted to are, and I don't really have the exact words, uh, the exact perfect terminology, but they're, they're drugs that are prescribed to help us with emotional or psychological issues. Um, so maybe we're dealing with a little bit of depression or we're feeling down or maybe we're dealing with anxiety. And, you know, we see a doctor and the doctor prescribes a, you know, maybe an antidepressant or something like that. And what happens is we slowly become dependent upon these medications that are prescribed to us. And when we, when we started off, we had no intention of becoming addicted to these things. We had no intention of taking them for the length of time that it takes to become addicted. addicted. It was going to be something that we just did it for a short period of time, maybe to get us over the hump, so to speak. But over time, we found comfort in this medication. We found comfort in these pills. We, we found comfort in that little round bottle that holds those pills. And we, you know, we, we, we ended up running to that bottle to get our medication to make us feel better, to get us through the next thing that we had to deal with instead of running to God. And so over the long haul, we have kind of pushed God aside and allowed ourselves to run to this bottle of medication instead of going to God when we need help, when we need strength, when we need counsel, and when we need courage to face the things that we need to face. These, these pills have become little tiny pieces of courage to face our lives. And please understand that this is not being said in any kind of a condescending way. But freedom needs to come, and we'll get, we'll get to the freedom part of it in a little bit here. But the second bottle that we need to talk about is the bottle of alcohol. Now, this can be anything from beer to wine to the hard stuff, the vodka, the, the rum, the whiskey, things like that. Again, no people drink alcohol with the intention of getting addicted. It's something that happens over time. Some people use it and abuse it harder than others do, but ultimately even occasional, I say occasional, and I don't mean that like intermittently every once in a while, but people who have smaller amounts, maybe on a less regular basis, but still do it repeatedly, can end up addicted. And so what happens is, a habit is created, and it could be a habit of just having a drink every night before you go to bed. It could be a habit of having, you know, a drink with your dinner and then another drink before you go to bed. But it ends up being this thing that creates a habit, that creates a cycle, that creates an addiction. And many times people don't even know that they are addicted until they try to stop. And so keep that in mind as we move forward. And and so we've covered the two bottles. Now, what is the box? What's this box that I'm talking about? A box refers to a box or a pack of cigarettes. Cigarettes are, are one of the most deadly addictions that's out there as far as things that can be bought legally over the counter. I'm not talking about 
uh, you know, illegal drugs, anything like that, those things are deadly in and of themselves. But cigarettes are designed and marketed and created with one purpose, and that is to addict people to them. And so cigarettes are readily and easily available to anyone who's old enough to buy them. And cigarettes will slowly kill us one puff, one drag at a time, one cigarette at a time. And again, this is not meant to be condescending, but over, over the years, Pastor Ellie and I have seen so many people fall prey to alcohol and to cigarettes and to prescription medications. And it's not just the world that this is happening to. It's happening inside of the body of Christ. And the numbers uh, that we're seeing are increasing and, and they are alarming because it's happening more and more and more. And so we want to bring this to people's attention. We want to make sure that people see this for what it is. And we want to be able to offer you help. We want to be able to offer you freedom from these things that are addicting you. We want you to be able to live your lives free the way God intended you to live them and not spend your time and your money addicted to these things that were created for the sole purpose of hooking you and reeling you in. We as children of God were not meant to live as slaves. We were not meant to live addicted to anything. We were not meant to live with our hands on a bottle or a box to try to tide us over to each new day that comes along. God created us to be his children. When we embraced Christ, we were covered by the blood of Christ. God wants us to be free in Christ. He does not want us to be a slave to anything, whether it's to other types of sin or these things that have addicted us. God does not want us to be slaves. So the reason that I read from Ezekiel 37, 1 through 10, is that as I was pondering on this earlier today, God showed me that the, the dry bones are similar to the addictions and the addicted people. So the, the dry bones that Ezekiel came upon in this vision in the valley are akin to or similar to or representative of those of us who have embraced and put our faith in Christ. Christ has made us alive, but we've slowly allowed addictions to start to suck the life out of us. And because of the addiction, there's a part of us that is dead all over again. And so just as God told Ezekiel to prophesy to the dry bones and to speak to them so that God could breathe the breath of life into them again. I'm speaking to you today not to scold anybody, not to make anybody feel condemned, but to help bring life back to your bodies, your minds, your spirits, to help you get free of these things that are holding you in bondage and that are so hard to break away from. By man's standards, it's almost impossible to get free of these things. But in Jesus' name, it is possible. And so I speak to you today as, as Ezekiel spoke to those dry bones and I say live. Live in Jesus' name and be free from these things that are holding you. Be free in Jesus' name. Jesus said, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. You see, it is not meant for us to live our lives in bondage to anything. If we are in Christ, then we should be free. We should be free from the addictions to the medications, the addictions to the alcohol, 
the addictions to nicotine, the cigarettes, these things, all these things that, that have this grip on us, it's time for us to surrender ourselves and surrender those things to God and let Him set us free. Jesus spent His time here on earth with people who were addicted, with people who were in sin, with people who were bound, and He touched their lives and He set them free. And they were free. They were not just a little free. They were free. They were free from the demons that possessed them. They were free from the sin that bound them. They were free from all the things that held them down. And so I speak to you today and I command that you be free in Jesus' name. I speak to you today and I speak freedom in your life in Jesus' name. Let go of that thing that's holding you. Surrender it today to God. Lay it at His feet. Lay it at the foot of the cross and leave it there. It's not always going to be easy, but in Christ, all things are possible. By man's standards, it's not possible, but with God, all things are possible. So take a minute right now. Take a minute right now. Surrender to God. Surrender this thing that has a grip on you and surrender it to God. Leave it at his feet. Place it there and leave it there. This is not for you to hold on to. This is your minute right now. This is your day, your time to get free. And it's not by anything that I have said. It's not even by anything that you do. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus that you are going to be free. So I want to pray with you right now. So right now, if God is speaking to you, pray with me. Listen to what's being said and apply it to yourself. Let God touch you from your head right down to your feet. Let him wash over your body and set you free in Jesus' name. So pray with me now. Father God, I come before you today in the mighty, precious name of Jesus. Lord God, I speak over these people, Father God, freedom in Jesus' name. Lord, let them be set free from the things that are holding them slave day after day after day. Break these addic addictions in Jesus' name. Break the strongholds in their lives. Break the power of these things that hold on to them so tightly. Help them to surrender and to let go in the mighty, precious name of Jesus. Lord God, you are able. Help each person watching to surrender. To surrender their lives to you wholly and fully. That these things would no longer have a grip on them. That, Lord God, that they would, that their minds would be renewed, Lord God, that they would know that they do not need these things in their lives any longer to get through or to face the things that they need to face or to get over the hump or any other reason, Lord God. And I know, Lord, that there are many of these people who want to be rid of this. There are so many that want to be rid of it. They've been fighting with it. They've been wrestling with it. God, give them the strength right now to surrender and to leave these things at your feet once and for all. Father, give them strength to walk out the next many days, the days and the weeks ahead, that they would not go back to these things that are holding them hostage. Let them not be like the Israelites who wanted to go back to Egypt just because it was familiar and it was comfortable. But Father God, give them strength in Jesus' name. Give them strength to let go. Give them strength to move forward. And give them strength to look to you, Father, instead of those very things that have held them captive for so long. And I pray in the precious, mighty, awesome, powerful name 
of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This is your day. This is your day to be free of the thing or the things that hold you as slaves, that keep you in irons and shackles and keep you from being who God wants you to be. Take the time right now to surrender. Take the time. It's not easy. It may not be an easy walk. There may be some who will watch this video and you will get free and you'll be able to walk away like it was never there. Some of you may struggle, but God can get you through it. God can bring you through this and bring you out the other side. It takes a little work and cooperation on our part many times to get past these things. But you can do it. You can do it in Christ. You can do it. You can't do it alone, but you can do it with God's help. So do it today. Get free. Let these things go. And live your life is a life of freedom from here forward. Amen? Amen. We love you guys. We want the best for you. We want you to be free in every aspect of your lives. So do the things that need to be done and move forward. And we hope that this has spoken to you. We hope that you are getting free right this very minute. We love you all. And until the next video, you take care. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.